The following is a presentation of the Redskins Broadcast Network. Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Each week Redskins Chronicles will take an in-depth look at a piece of this team's storied legacy and today we continue with the documentary 18 Plays, the story of Super Bowl 22. Before we focus on that, back on the field, the Redskins Sunday Night Football coming up, the New York Giants in town. The Redskins are 3-8 and eight, while the Giants are 4-7. and seven. The Skins hosted San Francisco last Monday night, a tough game against a tough team. Here are the highlights brought to you by Emerita. Third and eight at their own 36. Kaepernick takes. Blitz up the middle. He's going to get hit. He gets away from one man. Doesn't get away from the second. It's a Redskins sack. There's the snap. Kaepernick looking left. Going down the sideline. Looking for Bolden. It is caught. Kaepernick back to pass. He's got time. Going to the right corner of the end zone. Man is there. It is caught. And it's a touchdown. Play action. Wheels. No place to go. Fires to the middle. It is picked off. Whitman with the pick. At his own 36-yard line. There's the snap, the spot, the kick is on the way, and it is good. Forbath delivers. Griffin back to pass, pumps over the middle, it is caught. First down, Santana Moss. Looking, looking, fires down to the right side, it's caught. Joshua Morgan, it's a Redskins first down. Forbath is ready. The kick is on the way, and it is good. He hits it as time expires. Takes the snap. Fires in the middle, it is caught. Vernon Davis, he's got the first down. Loses the football when it's picked up by the Redskins. And the Redskins force the turnover on the first possession of the second half. Fourth and two. Going to give it to Roy Hallou. Makes a cut. Gets hit in the backfield. Doesn't get there. Still looking. Flushed out to the right. He's going to throw it into the end zone. And it is caught. Another touchdown for Anquan Bolden. Davis goes in motion. It's a handoff to Gore. Hit in the backfield and stuffed. Kaepernick keeps it, tosses it into the end zone. Easy touchdown pass to Vernon Davis. RG3 from the shotgun, fires it off to the left. It is caught. Pierre Garçon gets the first down out to the 34. On second and five, Robert, under some heat, gets hit, and he's going to get sacked. One more knee for Kaepernick. Final score tonight here at FedEx Field. A disappointing effort as they fall at home, 27-6 to San Francisco. Now, Robert Griffin III has had his ups and downs this year, but he feels this team can get better down the stretch. Here's what he had to say earlier this week. Yeah, we just got to make a, a conscious effort to decide over these next five weeks that we're going to get better. And um, it starts by going to work. And it started today. We had a nice practice, good practice. Guys were locked in. And, um, you know, that's all you can ask for at this point right now. We got to win. We got to win right now. And um, let everything else, you know, take care of itself. Uh, we just got to control what we can control. Yeah, you know, these next five weeks, our, our goal is to win, period. That's all that matters right now. You know, anytime you lose in the National Football League, um, there's going to be uh, there's going to be criticism. And uh, we understand that. Um, the, the hardest part of all of this is uh, probably the fact that we know um, that we're not what our record says we are. Talking to those guys in the locker room, it's uh, we know we're not what our record says we are. And that's what makes it tough. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be this hard and, and no one would be criticizing if, you know, we were we didn't think we were a good team. All I know is these next five weeks, we're, we're concentrated on winning. That's what I'm focused on, and I, I know the guys in that locker room are focused on that, too. More on the Redskins and Giants coming up a little bit later in the show. You know, each week here on Redskins Chronicles, we take a look at this team's history through the eyes of the men who played the game. And today, the second week of a three-week series, 18 plays, the story of Super Bowl 22. And we pick it up today with the Redskins a game away from the Super Bowl and making history with those 18 plays. Redskins Chronicles is brought to you by Diageo, who reminds all Redskins fans, responsibility is a team sport. Redskins Chronicles is brought to you by AAA. San Diego, here we come. Redskins got them on the run. Led by Williams, goal in our San Diego, here we come. Another shot at the NFC title, this time on the holy ground of RFK Stadium. For the second time in three games, the Redskins would face the Vikings. It would be another war of wills between two heavyweights and the ticket 
to face the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 22 came down to one play. Fourth down and four. Wilson takes the snap, looking left, throws it into the end zone, bends it away, incomplete. The Patriots are going to the Super Bowl. I kind of thought it had been completed. But then I see it bouncing on the ground. I saw Daryl Green, you know, with his hands up in there, and I knew um, that we were going to the Super Bowl. It was a great feeling. And, you know, people will say, well, you've been before. I got to tell you, I wanted that thing so bad. Good afternoon from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California. The road to Super Bowl 22 stops right here. While experts predicted another tight game for Super Bowl 22, most favored the Broncos for one reason. Elway. He had been named the NFL's most valuable player. Only one individual honor was left, Super Bowl MVP. The attention Williams received had less to do with his play and more with becoming the first African-American quarterback to start in a Super Bowl, an honor Williams embraced and still treasures. However, more important than starting a Super Bowl was how number 17 finished it. Joe Gibbs, Bob Bam, Jack King Cook didn't bring Doug Williams to San Diego to, to show off a black quarterback. Uh, we know why we came here. We came here to work hard and win the Super Bowl. Unsung rookie running back Timmy Smith never thought of starting in a Super Bowl over veteran George Rogers. But another gut feeling came over Joe Gibbs. Just before game time, Smith got the news. I was in the tunnel, and um, he said, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to introduce George Rogers as a starter, but you're going to start. And that's when all my plays and went blank in my head, and I was started breaking out sweating. I went up and I challenged him, and I let him know that, you know, this is the Super Bowl, and this is the first Super Bowl that I'll ever play in, and then probably my last one, but at the same time, I want to win. And I basically told him that if, if he did anything to screw it up today, that I was going to kick his he-know-what. And that's when my plays started coming back to me. Williams' teammates shared his intensity. Something was in the air. On the Broncos' first play from scrimmage, in the air was a perfectly thrown Elway pass to Ricky Natil for a 56-yard touchdown. That didn't take long, did it? First horse out of the gate, doesn't always win the race. Exactly right, Sam. After a Washington three and out, Denver continued moving the ball easily, thumbing deep into their playbook, while confusing the Redskins' defense and keeping them off balance. While the Redskins kept Elway out of the end zone, a Rich Carlos field goal gave Denver a two-score lead just the same. No team has won a Super Bowl game after trailing by more than seven points at any time during the game. Redskins are down 10 here in the first quarter. Nothing was going our way. Didn't seem like anything was going our way in that first quarter, which can happen in football. I can't repeat the words that I said. That's pretty much a couple of choice words that I typically said on the sideline. On the next kickoff, a scrappy, valued wide receiver who would soon become a hero nearly became a GOAT. Cuts back to the far side, 10. He's to the 15, upended, dropped at the 18. Fun Loose ball. football is a scramble at the 14-yard line. Broncos say they have it. To recover that ball in that pile was the was actually the play of the game, in my opinion, simply because if we don't recover that football, they got great field position. They could easily go up 17-0 or 13-0. Skirting disaster. The Redskins had one goal for their next drive settled down then down went their leader first and ten of the 35 he's back to pass again slips and falls and he's down again that turf and Williams looks like he's hurt when my foot hit that part of the turf it never stopped going I know get a grip on the ground and my foot just slid kept sliding and at that particular time just hyper extended my knee the agony on his face kind of tells it all that we thought that he had really hurt himself really, really bad, and you know, come to find out, he, he really did hurt himself bad. You know, it probably was something that within the next two years would end his career, quite honestly. What he actually did was almost like a split. And man, I, I said, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're probably gonna have a problem here. All I wanted was the strength of the good Lord to get me up to walk off that football field because the last person I wanted to play in that Super Bowl 
and it sounds, you know, sound a little revengeful, uh, but it's not so much that as the fact that from the embarrassment that I suffered in 1986, I did not want Jay Trader to play. I actually sent Jay in the game, and Doug pretty much said, as soon as Jay got out there, hey, this is my team, I'm playing, you're, you're back out. One Schrader series yielded a sack and a drop pass. But quietly, the defense was making adjustments, forcing the Broncos into their first three and out. Like we said in Chicago when the Redskins were down 14 to nothing. Right. You know, hey, things change in a hurry with this football team. So just hang tough. Okay, you know, hang I, tough. I think you're right, Sam. It's too early to panic. The Redskins took over on their own 20. With Doug Williams hobbling back in, pulling behind him, the dreams of a desperate fan base. For Broncos fans, the following 18 plays constituted a football nightmare with eyes wide open. For Redskins fans, ecstasy off the hook. Second quarter, Super Bowl 22. The Redskins down 10 to nothing. Desperate for a spark. First possession of the quarter. The spark lights the fuse, igniting offensive fireworks. 35 points in these 18 plays. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. High formation. Timmy Smith again, the deep back. Play action fake. Williams going up top. Got Sanders on the fly at midfield. He's gone unless they can catch him. The 30, the 20, the 15, the 10. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Just like that. Wow, this, this is basically a regular Charlie 10 hitch. Charlie 10 hitch. Charlie 10 hitch. Charlie 10 hitch call. Mike Haynes came up to press uh, Ricky Sound on the line of scrimmage, and we was always taught where if it's press, no help, we convert it to a fade route. You want the corners to be off, or you want them to press. Okay, what you don't want is too deep, because if it's too deep, now you got another receiver you'd have to throw to down the middle. In this particular case, they pressed Ricky, and we're all standing there going, oh my gosh, hurry up, snap it, hurry up, snap it. If he does not go up there and press lick Rick, Ricky runs a five-yard hitch route. But because our, our hitches turn automatically into fade routes, if you press us, that's why Ricky turns it into the fade. If he'd have been back five yards and went back, Ricky would have ran a five-yard hitch, and that would have been it. In that moment, man, it's just like, seemed like everything was going in slow motion. You, and, you know, I'm looking back saying, wait a minute, I know they ain't gonna catch me. <laughs> he didn't get his hand on Ricky Sanders and Slick Rick just ran by him and the rest of it is history. Wow. It, I don't know, it's just like, is that me? This one play, I think, started everything. Because I think from that point on, man, they hit that play and we're off and running. Uh, we put uh, Ricky in motion here across the formation, and we have routes on the outside, but you always work with our routes from deep to middle to the check down to the backs. And in this case, Donnie was the guy that was open, so Doug did a good job hitting him, and Donnie Warren was a big part of our offense, and uh, you see our offensive lineman trying to protect him downfield. Oh, this is a gut play right up the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, a, <laughs> that was a gut play, and uh, guys did a uh, great job up front. You got a wham block coming across, and that really opened us up. We set up the guy um, in at the nose tackle position, set him up, and Bostic went, went right to the linebacker, and Timmy just went right up the gut. And we used Donnie Warren as, as a, he, he was our, our bang guy. Donnie come in motion and, and he hit that, that D tackle right there. RC just set him up for Donnie right there and I just had, me and Jacoby just had a base man-on-man -man block. Now you can just see that the line was dominating that day, just dominating. See how fast Timmy was able to hit that hole? I mean, he's, picks up, he's picking up 10 yards to 12 yards a clip because the hole's there now. And they're not waiting, if you'll see, like watch the line. They completely clear out the hole for Timmy to run, basically our 50 gut. I had to man up and beat that Mr. All-Pro guy. I was beating him all day. We're trying to get the attention right now because we've got something coming back at him. Just trying to get him all to bite inside. 
Here's the same play on the other side, and it shows you how good defense can stop <laughs> stop the same play. We came back and tried the same thing the other way, trying to trap the other tackle. It wasn't as effective as you can see there. Kelvin Bryant was uh, obviously um, a great pass receiver for us, but also a great runner. You see his speed here. This is kind of the counter. We just ran Kelvin Bryant on, on a counter route and, and you counter play, and you could see the smoothness and the quickness of Kelvin Bryant, the way he gave the guy one leg and took it away and picked up a good seven yards on that play. Monk, who's in motion. Obviously, they're going to pass. Williams to pass, lobs it up. He's got Clark at the goal line. He's got it. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. All right. The Redskins have arrived. They woke up. The Redskins have taken the lead. Basically, I'm running, you know, scram seven. I'm running the corner route. I had dropped two balls earlier. I'm thinking I'm going to make up for everything right now. Uh, a little dive and catch to make sure that I definitely caught the football this time. I actually should have thrown the football to to Kevin Bryant because they, they blitzed the linebacker. And it's a build-in blitz for the quarterback. If the linebacker come, hit the high guy, you'll see Kevin Bryant running wide open to the left and the linebacker coming in. But it's one of those situations that as a quarterback, if you got to pay a price of getting hit for a TD, pay the price. And, and what I saw was was Gary Clark one-on-one. -on -one. I was fortunate because Dougie did not have to stay with me. He could have went to the back because it was a hot read, but because the line did such a good job and picked that up, he stayed with me. Fortunately for me, I went inside release. Defensive backs, a lot of time, if you do an inside release, they have to try to get back inside you because they have no help inside. When he did that, I came back to the corner and it was lights out. I think when we went up 14 to 10, I think from a confidence level we were, and from a physical level, we realized that what we had worked on all week, we was back in the position to do the things that we knew that we was capable of doing. That was controlling the football game. I told you this Denver defense can be had, and the Redskins offense has made their adjustment. They attack, they're attacking them now. This Denver defense has been had so many times. This Redskins ought to take them apart. In the second quarter, the Redskins went from desperation to domination. A 10-point deficit to a four-point lead, and rolled on with the seventh of 18 plays. Dougie Fresh coming. Actually, I'm running a four route, so it probably was 495. I ran a four route, saw that the safety was inside. Dougie Fresh threw it back to my outside, which a great quarterback would, will do. But can see, surveys the field. He's making my job look easy. I'm just turning, trying to make somebody miss, which I should have made that guy miss completely, and I could have got some more yardage on that play. You know, Gary's wide open, and even on that play there, I saw a couple of the Broncos go low at my knee, trying to take a shot at me, but that's, that's football. First and 10 of the 42, the Redskin 42. They're working right to left in front of us here. He'll hand off to Smith, the deep back. Good hole, midfield, horse race to the 40. Far side, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Timmy Smith from 58 yards. All right, we got a split left. Ricky Sanders going in motion. Oh, uh, that's the counter, counter gap, 60 counter gap. I got Jacoby coming down, kicking out, and that gives me opportunity to decide. All I have to do is beat two men, it's the corner and the safety. And I think that what got their attention. Both Mark May and RC had double teamed to the backside backer, and then I just pummeled poor Ricky Homley there. He tried to, he tried to hang at, at, at the outside linebacker, and then Jacoby just came up on the inside linebacker, and uh, Timmy just kind of did his thing and made his safety miss and outrun the other safety. If you look at this play now, nobody on the line of scrimmage put a hand on Timmy Smith. And, and I think what that tells you, the way this offensive line was blocking, that hole was so wide and he ran through there and, and Tony Little took a bad angle and I guess he underestimated Timmy Smith's uh, speed. I remember this, this is a uh, scholar cabbage patch. <laughs> Redskins Chronicles is brought to you by Diageo. It reminds all Redskins fans, responsibility is a team sport. Redskins Chronicles is brought to you by AAA.
Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Sunday night is the Redskins hosting the New York Giants. New York got off to a horrible start this year, losing their first six. They bounced back with four straight wins before losing last week to Dallas. Eli Manning's had a great big-time quarterback reputation, but this year he's been shaky. A QB rating of 72.5, more interceptions and touchdowns. 14 scores, 17 picks. Along with that, the G-Men have had a mediocre running game this year, averaging 3.6 a carry and bringing back Brandon Jacobs as a reinforcement. Victor Cruz just four touchdowns this year. The Giants defense is rated seventh in the NFL against the run, and their traditional strength of the front four is still there. Jason Pierre Paul, Justin Tuck leading the way, but their sacks are down this year. Just 18 sacks over 11 games. We thank you so much for watching Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park, and we'll see you right here next week.